What's going on guys? Welcome back to another book review and I am as always your grateful host Cam Williamson. If you're new to these videos, I'll break down the format for you real fast. I am covering Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. Okay, how I do these, I will read the back of the book to give you a general outline of just what the book is about. I will then give you a spoiler free general review of how I liked it, whether or not I think it's worth a read, and then I will give you a warning and I will get into the spoiler section where we'll just talk raw gritty about the book for the people that have read it or the people that just want to hear a discussion about the entire thing. Knox Morgan doesn't tolerate drama, especially in the form of a stranded runaway bride. Naomi Witt is on the run, not just from her fiance in a church full of well-wishers, but from her entire life. Although if you ask her, Naomi's riding to the rescue of her estranged hot mess of a twin, Tina, to knock him out a rough around the edges town where disputes are settled the old fashioned way with fists and beer, usually in that order. Too bad for Naomi, her evil twin hasn't changed at all. After helping herself to Naomi's car and cash, Tina leaves behind something unexpected, the niece Naomi didn't know she had. Now she's a guardian to an 11 year old going on 30 with no car, no money, and no plan. There's a reason this bearded bad boy barber doesn't get involved with high maintenance women, especially not type A romantic ones. But since Naomi's life imploded right in front of him, the least Knox can do is help her out of a jam. And just as soon as she stops getting into new trouble, but he can leave her alone and get back to his quiet, solitary life. At least that's the plan. Okay, <clears throat> let's be honest. When I first grabbed this book, I was intimidated by its size. I was like, wow, this is a bigger book than I'm used to reading. I'm used to Colleen Hoover-ish size books where they're about 300 pages long. This one is 552 pages, so it's a big book. Okay, let's get into the general overview of the book and what I kind of thought about it. So when I first started reading it, it was very slow, very slow. I didn't care, really. Uh, I wasn't really dedicated to the book. I would say mm, chapter 13, 12, 13 is when I was like, okay, now I actually want to see this thing through. So as we heard, Naomi left her wedding, which you don't even really find out until you know, chapter five, chapter six, you know, she's, she's just showing up to help her sister, Tina, who's a piece of garbage. The book opens where Naomi is getting a cup of coffee and then she's being yelled at by the, well, she's already been yelled at by the coffee guy and goes, I'm not serving you. You know that it, she's like, what the hell says, look, I have a twin. You're probably talking about her. You called me Tina. That's my sister's name. Same thing happens with Knox, and he comes in, and she, he's like, I told you to get the hell out of here, you know, whatever. And so, again, it takes them way too long. She, like, lets this play out where she's he's being super mean to her when she could just be like, hey, before you even start, I'm not my sister Tina, you know, whatever. This book is very drawn out. Um, Knox, as a character... I wasn't a huge fan of, to be very honest. Um, I thought when it came to just his relationship with Naomi, I, I don't do I I don't like the enemies to lovers trope, especially when it's they are just downright rude to one another. I don't, as an adult, want to read a story about two people, two grown adults acting like children on the playground where pulling hair and being mean to each other is how we imply that we like one another. I have to ignore a lot of toxicity when it comes to fiction, but like, I just don't like that. He was a very possessive character that I don't like um, from guys. I, I don't like it when guy characters are often written as very possessive. I think Knox was over the top. Naomi as a character was good. Um, the niece that came in was a cool character, Waylay. You'll want to get to know her and, and see her through. There's a lot of characters in this book. Naomi has a best friend, Steph. Um, later on, Naomi's parents come into play. Knox has his grandmother and his brother, also his best friend from childhood. There's a few tag-along biker crew members that are in there. There is um, Knox's bisexual business partner who ends up dating one of you know someone close to him 
in the book, there's a lot of characters. There's a lot of stuff that goes on. Throughout the book, Naomi and Knox are essentially trying to stabilize Waylay's life, being her niece, after her mother, Tina, robs Naomi. She tells Naomi, I need you to come see me, bring some money. I'm in deep, you know, I'm in trouble. You get the general idea early on that Tina's been a screw up her whole life. Uh, they really start to hone in towards the end of the book on how Naomi's always been the one to bail her out of situations. When the book finally starts to go and really you're like, okay, I see where we're going now. I see what's up. You start to like it more. Okay. <clears throat> Would I recommend this book? Probably not, to be very honest. No. Um, I, I really hated Knox in this book. I just didn't like his character. They made him mean as hell, <clears throat> which then he went from being mean to being crude about pretty much like, I don't even like you. I have nothing that I have any business to do with you. I just have a strong desire to screw you. So you're like, real enticing, dude. Nice romance setup. And then all of a sudden she falls for it, which also in this book, one thing I didn't like, they made it seem like every woman in this book, any man that she lays eyes on, she's instantly attracted to. And imagining having sex with him or something like that, which I'm not a woman, so I can't speak for women. But like as a guy, and we have a lot of stereotypes about what guys are like and people say we only want one thing. We don't walk around and look at every single woman and go, she's attractive. I'd like to fuck her. So to have every woman meet every guy in the book and her first thought is, wow, he's gorgeous. He's a sexy hunk of you know, muscle. And you're like, I bet if that's the, you know, the world you live in. But it was hard. It was hard to ignore the possessiveness. There was so many times in this book where Knox is in a situation and you're like, yo, Naomi, why don't you just stand up for yourself? And be like, hey, man, leave me alone. Because, again, he's not nice to her in the beginning of the books. So you're like, you don't even want them to be around each other. You feel weird about Naomi's situation because you're like, you have a ton of options you could actually do here. You don't have to like confide yourself to this situation. So again, it's not until probably a, more than a quarter to half of the way through the book that you even care about these people. It's a tough sell. I'm going to get into the spoilers now so I can speak more candidly and uh, we'll be able to wrap this review up. So spoilers in three, two, one. All right. Here's one thing I will say about the book as far as its spicy parts go the sex scenes go this is probably the most like adult and accurate i've seen <clears throat> a sex scene play out you you hear that and you're like yeah that's actually the way people make love for sure now again knox was very possessive everything is give me that that's mine i'm gonna take that and oh my god everything everything that she does is just mine and you're like all right man fucking relax you know I'm not a person who believes that love is about possession, so I don't I get the sexual desire to devour and own in a sense. But again, they made it seem like Naomi and this guy were blatantly rude to each other, had no commonalities whatsoever. He just kept imposing himself in her life and into her situations because he felt like he was going to help her. But again, all because he was attracted to her and secretly wanted to fuck her, but he was just being mean to her. And you're like, yeah, this is not something that I, I want to get behind. So again, you're not pulling for the characters in the book. And then when you find out, this is the very end of the book, you find out that the reason she was running from her, her ex fiance, his name is Warner. Um, is not just because, you know, they're making fun of him the whole book, saying he's kind of a pretentious fuckhead, he, you know, he's whatever. Uh, he comes from his parents' money. He got a job at his dad's business and, you know, whatever. He's just not a not a stand-up dude. Like, And Knox won the lottery, and with that lottery winnings, he um, 
you know, opened a few businesses. He was a barber. He opened a bar. Um, he helped a couple people out. And his brother, Nash, is the police chief of the area. And they're constantly fighting with each other. And, you know, and this is another thing I didn't really care for about the book is that there's a sibling rivalry where two brothers are having a quarrel and they don't speak or they're not just nice to each other even when they're around. But these two literally throw punches every time they're in a room together. And one of them is the chief of police. You're like, guys, these aren't kids. Why, why, with the possessiveness and punching people, like, this is so immature and just dumb. And this, I mean, I get it. This is probably a young adult category book. But we're like, yo, it's still got to be a story here. And in the, you know, this story is so hard to believe because there's just so much shit going on. In the beginning, Tina, the sister, the twin, is showing up to this town of knock em out and is robbing people, is doing all this shady stuff. So the whole city hates her. She ends up dropping Wele, just deserting her, and robbing Tina, or robbing Naomi of her cash and her clothes and stuff. And then she does this routine where she comes back to knock him out, dressed like Naomi, and is like breaking into people's houses, including Naomi's, and stealing stuff and, you know, doing whatever. Well, she ends up getting tied in with this high level uh, criminal. And he ends up, you know, kidnapping Wele. And that's the ending of the book is Wele being kidnapped by this guy who shows up around Naomi twice trying to figure out kind of her whereabouts and what she's doing. Naomi starts to feel weird about her. And this is all happening when her and Knox stop screwing and he breaks things off with her. And he's like, I can't keep doing this. You keep catching feelings for me. I keep telling you I'm not going to do that. And it's breaking my you know, heart to see you fall for me when it's just never going to happen. I'm telling you, it's never going to happen. So again, you're like, dude, you, you insert yourself into her life. You hook up with her. You treat her now pretty much her daughter, Wele. It's her niece, but she's treating her as if she's her daughter you get attached to her and then you go peace i'm out because there's feelings and shit and i don't do feelings <clears throat> so at the end of the book you find out that knox's dad was an addict after knox's mom died he fell apart and he pretty much deserted his kid for addictions drinking and pills and stuff so he has this like stain in his soul for love and building a family he's like ah i come from bad cloth on that one i'm, I'm just best not to you're like, dude, can we grow up a little bit at some portion of this book? You guys are throwing hands every time you're in a room. He tells everybody what to do all the time. He works uh, the bar that he owns. It's all a female wait staff. And he talks to them all like, you know, I'm not doing that shit. Leave me the fuck alone. And you're like, okay, that's not how you speak to women. I don't give a fuck how small your town is. I don't care if you're the most richest and you buy everyone houses and do everyone's laundry every week. I don't give a shit. You're not allowed to walk around and talk to people like they're garbage. And yeah, they kind of give it back to them a little bit where they're like, I don't know who you're talking to like that. You know, they're these uh, rough around the edges kind of bar chicks. Um, I don't know, man. It was hard to like, but... At the same token, once you get into it, like I said, it was hard to put down. Well, I got the most invested into Wele. I wanted to see Wele turn out all right. I really didn't care about Tina at all. Even once they said what she was up to, I was like, yeah, fine. Uh, Naomi was a good main character. I liked her. She helped drive the story a lot. Knox sucked. Nash is a brother character. He got shot like towards the end of the movie. or <laughs> I always say movie towards the end of the book and it it was kind of anticlimactic you thought maybe they were going to kill him off but they were like no he's fine everything's good the coolest part i think about this book is the way that Knox does treat everything and everyone almost like a cavalry where when someone has a problem everyone bands together to fix said problem and you don't put anything work money Nothing above you take care of family and the people that you love the most. That I really enjoyed. I liked all the times when someone was in trouble, like when Wele got kidnapped. It was almost like when you watched like a Scooby-Doo movie or something. You were like, I don't know how they're going to do it, but they're going to show up. They're, you know, The spinning saw thing is not going to get them or the alligators aren't going to snap them because at the very last second, the hero is going to swing in and or kick down the door and that's what ends up happening. 
Um, at the same time, you know, they're kind of resolving the breakup between Naomi and Knox. That was like him showing up going like, I'm not going anywhere. This is crazy. I'm always going to be here for you. And right before that, Nash and their best friend together, his name's Lucian. They call him Lucy throughout the thing. You get to the feeling that he's kind of this bad guy. He does bad shit. Uh, he, he knows a lot of powerful people when he moves and a pretty intimidating way. You don't really know what he does, but you know he's kind of a bad dude. Because um, even the police chief, when he first sees him again, he's like, we're not going to have any issues, are we? Like, I'm I'm still the chief of police. I'm not going to turn my head on most shit. But then again, he does. So it's one of those things where the banding of the brothers coming back between Knox and Nash and then Lucian coming in, that was cool to see. And just the fact that they used it to better their community keep it safe but again they were like a little three-man mob running around punching people and being assholes and it just so happened that the new girl in town fell for the millionaire dickhead guy it's like yeah no i don't want to root for that because if that was my family i'd be like yeah you leave him alone oh by the way when her parents come in her dad hates him for like two seconds and it's like oh this guy's all right he's got a lot of money he's got businesses eh, fair good. when the very first scene that they meet he walks down the stairs naked after banging his daughter you're like, yeah, no one would be okay with this. And that's the general overtone with most of this book. You're like, no one would be okay with any of this. Naomi would not just settle with her sister, abandoning her kid on her, and then going through to commit more crimes that everyone knows she's committing. And people are just going to let it slide and be like, well, this is your problem now. You've got an 11-year-old kid. Guess you're you know, stuck to this city. And then all of a sudden, she's getting like cabins given to her, um, Knox's grandma lets her live in her cottage for free with Waylay. They she gets two jobs in the same day she shows up in town, and this is like she shows up one day expecting to have a lunch. She gets robbed by her sister, and that same day ends up with two jobs, a cottage, and a guy who she's banging, but he's an asshole to her. And then she just becomes a part of this community, and she's like the leader of it because she ends up hooking up with Knox. And he won the lottery and opened a few businesses. It's just a hard story to follow. It's a hard story to believe. You're like, this is a lot of one time, once in a lifetime type things happening. And you're also basing it around a romance where they're dickheads to each other. How, how am I supposed to enjoy this? So you guys let me know. What did you think of the book? As far as entertaining goes, if you're just going entertaining and it doesn't have to make sense, it doesn't have to be mature, it doesn't have to be responsible... Entertainment wise, you can go a four out of five, I guess. I would go a seven out of ten. Lucy score, good job on writing. It was well written. I thought the story just could have used some help. Shorten it down. Take all the repetitive. There was a lot of repetitive shit on here. We're like, we get it. Tina's a dirtbag. We got it. Waylay's a smart ass. You know, we got it. Nash and Knox don't like each other. Let's go. Wrap it up. Like, we don't need four fist fights between brothers to get the fact that they don't like each other. I don't like the fact that they use Naomi like she was a sex pawn. The brothers, Naomi, or Knox and Nash, were like, well, I'm going to get her first. No, she's mine. Again, it was all like possessive. Like it was nothing about caring for her as a person. Everything from Knox was like, I just got to be inside her and I just have to own her and devour her. If anyone, if I find out anyone else touches her, I'll fucking kill him. And it's like, Okay, man. All right, dude. Like, if you were a guy that I knew in real life, I'd be like, hey, dude, maybe try decaf. Like, chill the fuck out a little bit. Let people live their lives. Let people make their own mistakes. Let people be, dude. He's that guy that just always shows up to be like, what's going on here? Well, let me tell you how I'm going to fix that. And you do that. And you're a fucking idiot. Shut up. And you're like, okay, dude, I'd last that for two seconds. Before I tell you to kick rocks, which is why the whole time I'm like trudging through the beginning of this book going, come on, come on. This thing's got to pick up. It's got to start. I've heard so many great things about this book. Also, let's talk about the cover. Why is there daisies on the front? Knox calls Naomi Daisy the entire book because she had daisies in her hair from her running away from her wedding. So when they got married, he insisted she had daisies in her hair and they do get married. At the end of the book, they can't have kids. They have fertility issues, so they adopt two. And everyone lives as one big happy family. The bisexual dude and the gay barber uh, business partner, 
end up marrying each other. Uh, everybody ends up with a partner. Knox <coughs> and Naomi. Nash ends up with a wife. Uh, Lucian was with like their library assistant um, named Sloan. And I think they ended up back together as well. So it's like all big one happy family out of total chaos. Tina ended up uh, being caught and she was in jail uh, when she ran away at the very end. I won't spoil like the big climax scene, but she was arrested at the end. There's a big, you know, big final action scene. It was fine. It was fine. It was kind of hard to tell at one point because it was like, Knox punches guy. Guy falls to ground. Oh, shit. Gun. Wait, what? Huh? Bang, bang. Wait, what? Huh? I didn't know what happened. And you were like, wait, who got shot? Motherfucker, get to it. And then they finally get to it. And you're like, wait, now I'm lost. Because you were punching him. He hit the ground. Somehow he had a gun, but you just punched him and he hit the ground. But now he's standing and he's got a gun. I don't know who shot who. Somebody hit somebody. What happened? Right? So in that part, it was a little confusing for the climax, but I think maybe I was just getting a little excited to finish this book. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. Drop a like for me. It helps so much. Subscribe if you want to see the other book reviews I got. And hit the bell if you want to see them as soon as I drop them, baby. I love you. See you in the next one.